Historically, the importance of cardiovascular disease is relatively a new um, concept in the treatment of lupus. I can remember in the 1980s and 1990s when patients with kidney disease, for example, would have very high cholesterols and the, it was felt that the treatment of the kidney disease itself was sufficient to address the elevated cholesterol. And the very high risk of cardiovascular disease in lupus was identified uh, a couple of decades ago. There was an important study from Toronto that showed that there was a bimodal pattern of, of, of uh, mortality in lupus, so that in the first 10 years that patients would die of, of um, the lupus disease, act, lupus disease activity, such as kidney disease and infections. And in the second decade, then the activity of lupus does tend to subside after uh, a period of time, and the patients remain at very high risk for cardiovascular events. So this means a number of things. First of all, it means that we need to study the causes and prevention of cardiovascular disease in people with lupus. And the second is that in the same way that, that in the old days that cancer chemotherapy was really directed towards saving the patient, and now there are kinds of cancer, such as certain kinds of leukemias, where the chemotherapy is directed at not harming the patient too much while they're being saved because we know that the treatment is going to work. And the treatment of lupus need, ha, has to look down the road past the successful treatment of the inflammatory component of the disease to how the patient is going to be after a period of treatment and a period of disease activity which may have gone away. So uh, in treating a patient with new lupus, one has to look at and say there's going to be a time when the biggest problem this patient has is their long-standing risk of cardiovascular disease so that preventive measures need to be started right from the beginning. So in terms of investigating the causes of cardiovascular disease, the key cell in the body that protects blood vessels from injury is the endothelial cell, and this is the lining cell inside of blood vessels. And the endothelial cells and blood vessels are kind of like tiles on the inside of a pipe or like rust-oleum on the outside of a piece of metal. They, they cover up the, the, the vessel and they prevent injury. And endothelial cells are lost into the bloodstream and usually not very quickly. Usually a few die and fall off and they're replaced. But it turns out that in lupus, that the endothelial cells tend to fall off more quickly and be replaced more slowly. We started studying cardiovascular disease and lupus about 10 years ago, and uh, my colleagues, uh, including Emily Summers, who's an epidemiologist, and Mariana Kaplan, who's had a very distinguished career looking at the basic science of, of uh, lupus and inflammation, uh, began looking at patients who had no prior cardiovascular disease, uh, but were at risk for developing to see what risk factors corresponded to the presence or development of early markers of cardiovascular disease. And we found the following things. First of all, if you have active lupus, then your endothelial cells, blood vessel lining cells, may be falling off at a rate that's 10 times higher uh, than, than a normal person. So that normally every cubic millimeter of blood has about 30 of these cells that have died and lupus patients may have 300 or 500. And this happens when disease is active, and it also happens when the blood vessels are dysfunctional and don't work the way they're supposed to. Normally, blood cells should expand when there's a demand for oxygen and contract when oxygen is not needed. And the ability of the blood vessels to expand is related to being able to tolerate exercise and to have good cardiovascular health. The inability of the blood vessels to open up when there's a demand is associated with an increased risk of heart attacks. So it turns out that patients whose blood vessels don't work and who have active lupus are the ones who have the most dead and dying cells in their bloodstream. And the second question is, well, if the cells fall off, it's probably okay unless there aren't any replacements available. But what happens to the same patients is when their lupus is active, then the blood cells, the new cells, they're called endothelial precursor cells, the ones that are going to turn into endothelial cells, aren't available. And there are fewer of them instead of more of them. And you'd like to, if you're going to, going to lose more cells, you'd like more replacements. Then in this, this case, the replacements aren't available. And what Dr. Kaplan showed is that one of the triggers of lupus activity, which is interferon, 
which has been identified as a major factor in triggering lupus disease activity, such as rash, arthritis, and kidney disease, also appears to trigger this imbalance in the endothelium. So the same compound that can make lupus become more active and uh, cause increases in what we think of as traditional disease activity also appears to be associated with a decreased ability to heal blood vessels that have been injured and therefore be associated with both the first part of lupus we, we think about, which is the, the active disease, and then the second phase, which is when we have increased cardiovascular disease.